Okay. Let's change your butt. You smell like you poopy. And I don't know if you guys can see me. It just, it like shadow moved right here. Really? I believe it. I didn't see it, but I believe you. I just saw a light in, in that room. Who's in here with us? Please come talk to us. We're here. Can you show us where you are? Sorry. Very good. Oh. you to the first image of the moon ever taken. It was a daguerreotype by John W. Draper from the 1840s. It was taken on a rooftop observatory in New York City. It says that since the image has sustained damage, but I beg to differ. That crescent moon shape you're seeing in the center, well, it's not the moon at all. It's actually just a hole in the center of this square that you're seeing clear as day. Here in the images. These images are extremely hard to explain, extremely hard to comprehend and understand. What are we looking at? Are we looking at an ice cube? Are we looking at a container of water? Are we looking at roughly the top side of the earth? Is the moon just a mirror? Is it reflecting that of the earth? It's a possibility. I've been racking my brain ever since I saw these images, ever since they were brought to me by Shelly Mantooth. Big thanks to her. This was something I never thought to even search out. The first images of the moon ever taken is a search criteria that just wasn't something that came to mind as something I should do in my career. Well, as the moon guy is the go-to when it comes to the moon and the surface of the moon, I should have seen this. It slipped by me. It's a very, very strange set of images. This daguerreotype by John W. Draper would be an easy one to write off as just a mistake or damaged, even a big hoax, if there wasn't so much corroborating evidence pointing to its validity. Here, we have one of the most amazing and famous photos of the moon ever taken by our own Stella Lansing from the very famous Stella Lansing case. This is by far one of my most favorite images of the moon that I've ever seen. But of course, I never understood it until now. You can find this image along with many other amazing images in the Stella Lansing case inside of the Stella Lansing archive and her foundation. This image clearly shows that the moon is an innie and not an Audi. It is recessed and it explains many things like the phases of the moon as well as the eclipses. This image has always captured the mystery and the wonder of anyone who looked upon it because it depicted the moon as a hole in our sky, a hole in the heavens. 
The next few images were taken by myself and looked past for years. I never noticed them. I never thought there was anything special to them until I saw the first images of the moon ever taken. That's when I looked back on my own archives and found these two beauties, both depicting the moon the same way as the Stella Lansing image as an innie and recessed a lesser light in the sky, just like talked about in the Bible. The one thing you'll quickly notice about these two images is that they both share the quote-unquote damages as the daguerreotype image taken by John W. Draper. I think we're safe to assume that these are not damages at all, but in fact some sort of either reflection or an artifact on the object itself. You may remember these objects, they're called mirror scopes. They were holographic projectors, decorations and toys. You would put a toy or scaled image inside of the mirror scope itself. The reflective insides would bounce the image and the reflection of that toy or scaled image around on the insides and sooner or later it would holographically project the image on a smaller scale out the top or the front side of the mirror scope itself. This is how I thought the sun, the moon, and the stars actually worked before seeing the first images of the moon ever taken. Now, my thoughts and theories are just slightly different. Instead of it being an around applicator, it's actually being holographically projected from a square one, as we see here. What I'm showing on the screen now are actual mirror scopes that I've caught with my own telescope or camera out in lower Earth orbit. As you can see, the lighter ones, I think we're safe to assume, take care of the holographic projection of the stars and much lighter colored lights in the sky where the darker mirror scopes handle all the holographic projections for things like the phases of the moon. Here you can actually see a phase of the moon being holographically projected from a square apparatus. Here if you look close enough to the inside of the circle, you will see the actual moon itself on the inside of this circle. It's very strange. Very strange indeed. Now what would a mystery be? What would strangeness be, high strangeness, if the Egyptians weren't involved? Here we have a depiction of the same sort of artwork, technologies, and oddities depicted in the first images of the moon, here in the temple of Khufu. It's almost like the Egyptians were trying to tell us that they had seen behind the veil, and they wanted to let us know all about it. If you study the image and the artwork yourself, you'll come to find that it depicts a very famous Neolithic figurine by the name of Venus of Malta. She's depicted on the bottom as laying across a bed, sleeping, that are known as the Sleeping Lady. And in the corners of all the art, you'll see different words and messages on the left hand side by her head it says earth on the right hand side ethos but depicted in all of the corners you can make out a word that says ark ark and another strange depiction is right around the word earth we can see a word that can only be pronounced as leave L-I-E-V and we notice with the way it's written we're to read it backwards as well and when we do it spells Baal. In the center of the figurine we can see a depiction of the moon itself being holographically projected in a few different phases. You can see the moon is waning, waxing, crescent and even fingernail. It's all here. They were trying to tell us something important. I wonder what it was. I've taken the initiative of bringing out all the details I possibly could from this very important collection of images. I can't help but think these images should be protected. 
They should be taught in schools. They should be shown to more people, even if those people aren't asking. I don't think I've ever looked at another set of images that had more effect on me than what we're looking at here. Now that I look at the version of the Egyptians take on this entire situation and scenario, it makes me wonder, what does veil mean? And what does arc mean? What are they trying to tell us? Can we afford to ignore it? Can we afford not to think about it? It all seems too important. I'm Boogie. This is the Boogeyman Channel. Because reality is stranger than fiction. Take care.